We are going to take a look at histograms and grouped data frequency tables or frequency distributions. Here we've got, um, we're starting with the histogram. And what I want to do is just talk about the features of this. So um, I've gone through the process of turning this into a table. And the way I did that is by noting these features, starting with first the lower class limits. That would be the number on the left side of each bar. So class one is this box right here that goes appearing to go from 25 to 30. We want to just start with the lower class limit. That's the 25. So we'll do that for each box. The next one goes uh, starts at 30. The next one starts at 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. And the last one starts at 60. So 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Those are the lower class limits. For the upper class limits, we can look at the right side of that box. The problem is the right side of the first box is 30. We can't go to 30. We already used it. You know, if you look at this table the way it is and I see a data point of 30, I would count it twice or I would just not know where to put it. So we have to go back a little bit from 30, for example, to 29.999 or nine repeating. Now that would round to 30, but it's going to have a lot more digits than we really need. If we're counting parasites, then we wouldn't even really need a tenths place. We're never going to have a hive that has 29.9 parasites or 29.5 parasites or even 29.1 parasites. The next measurement below a 30 is actually just a 29. So if our data were uh, our whole numbers, we can leave a gap of one in between. If our data are tenths, we leave a gap of 0.1. If our data are hundredths, we leave a gap of 0.01 or we go to 0.99. And so we match the precision of the data like that. And now we end up with upper class limits that are also spaced by five, 29, 34, 39, 44. That's our upper class limits ending at 64. Technically, this is 64.9 repeating, which is going to make it look like it goes right up to 65. But this data set could not include a measurement of 65 because that is not in um, any of these classes. It's not actually in that last class. Interval notation does a much better job of um, conveying or communicating those class limits because we see it's including a 25. That's an inclusive with a box and it's excluding a 30. This is kind of how um, our tax system works. You're in one of those tax brackets and one side of it has to be exclusive. One side has to be inclusive. Um, if not, we need to leave like a penny difference in between each of those classes. Now, what I did is I wanted to be able to recreate the histogram. So I went ahead and sort of reverse engineered a data set from the table. I said there's one measurement from 25 to 29. Well, that could be a 25, it could be a 29, I picked 27. Then there's six measurements from 30 to 34. You'll see those there. And so I'm just, I just made up numbers so that basically I would have the right frequency in each group. Um, now I'm going to copy that into Staplet. Let's go, that's a different data set. Let's go to a new one. This will be one quantitative variable single group. Just pasting data there, making sure there's no words included. And I would put the variable name up here. So this is a number of parasites uh, in Hive. And with the dot plot, we do see kind of somewhat of the di disbursement of data, but it's a little bit more helpful to group those because they're not really reoccurring too much. If, basically, if none of these dots stack up very high, then we want to group them. The histogram will do the grouping, and it's actually going to create the exact same picture that I started with automatically. It won't always do that, um, but if the original histogram was set up well, it really should be easy to, to recreate. Now, other things that I could do is I could change the width or starting value. The minimum of my data set was actually 27, so I could start there. The thing is, is we really, we don't like to have these oddball numbers. Like this one's going 27 to 32, actually 27 to 31, since it's not including the 32. 
This is going 32 to 36, 37 to 41, 42 to 46. So they're still all separated by five, but since we're not on the fives, it kind of looks weird. We could change the width to maybe a three or something like that to get more classes or even fewer classes if we increased it to six or seven. Um, you can really play around with that a lot and it can look very different just making small changes um, depending on how much grouping is going on there. So you might have some problems that ask about those class limits, that class width, um, and then I saw this one problem that was just kind of weird to me, and that was this one. This is the uh, number of items over 10 problem, and I really thought it was weird, but I like the weird problems because this happens in real life all the time. Here's the problem that we're given. This is the graph that we're given. The data set is how many items over 10 people had when they were in the express lane. So they're not supposed to be there. We wanna know how far over have they gone, and we're counting those items. Frequency is how many times that count was observed. So I've gone in and I've said, okay, first class is 0.5 to 1.5, but it's not including a 1.5, that's open-ended on the right. So I dial it back a little to 1.4. But then I asked myself, you know, these are whole numbers. Why am I even using all these decimals? Couldn't I dial it all the way back to one? Couldn't I dial this all the way back to two? And then you ask yourself, well, why am I starting at 0.5? If these are all whole numbers, then there's nothing below one. It, you know, the next thing below one would be a zero, but we, we don't have any measurements of zero. So then you ask yourself, well, why am I even grouping these if I just only have a one in that first box and only a two in that second box and so on? So I'm gonna undo that and just show you, I, I was able to recreate this exact same uh, graph just by using whole numbers only. And um, the data set here is very easy to make. I don't even have to guess on numbers. There's six, a frequency of six, and in the range from 0.5 to 1.5, oops, there we go. In the range of 0.5 to 1.4, the only whole number is a one. So that's six ones. And then we have nine twos, 12 threes, and so on. If I do paste this into, um, the staplet, let's see, I might have that. No, I don't have that. If I paste this into the staplet, it it doesn't work great as a histogram. And I don't think it's gonna show up exactly like that example did. One quantitative variable, let's put that. This is number of items over 10. As a dot plot, it's just fine. We could get rid of these 0.5s, they're unnecessary. They're kind of, there's kind of big gaps there, so it makes it a little tougher to use. As a histogram, it's basically making the same histogram, only it's um, shifting it. So instead of starting at 0.5, we start at one, and we're saying include one, but don't include two. Um, I thought it maybe even worked better than that if we did it as a, um, as a, as a bar graph, which there's not a, super easy way to do that in Staplet unless you decide to enter it as categorical. So you'd have to put in each one, two, three, four in each frequency and it's just kind of a lot of steps um, just to make it look a little different. Now let's say we have a problem where we start with a data set. Uh, let's see, something like something like this problem and I don't need sheets for this. I'm gonna start with a, a blank staplet. And it's asking about, you know, if we're gonna start with this data set and create the histogram, what's gonna be the optimal class width? It's a good question to ask. So um, what we'll start with is we wanna know the range, which is the maximum minus the minimum. If you go to your one quantitative variable and paste that in, you got your max and your min right there. So 5920 minus 1060 is gonna give us 4860. That is the distance from the max to the min. That's gonna be divided, so think about that as the distance across the histogram, into 10 classes. Divided by 10, that's 486. The problem is if we use 486, 
because of that little gap at the end, like thinking right here, we don't actually include the very last number. So if we don't round that up, it's not even really considered rounding, we're going to inflate that value. So 4860 divided by 10 is 486, inflate that to a nice number. 487, 488, 489, um, 490. 490 is kind of nice. Um, let's see what um, Staplet does when it creates it for us. First thing is, it's actually not going to start at the minimum. It's going to start all the way down at 1,000, and it's going to go up by 1,000. So I don't know that we're going to do the same thing that Staplet does. I think 490 or even 500 would be a great answer. So let me plug in 4860. I'm going to go all the way to 500 and see if that will be allowed. And that's going to be just fine. Um, it may also accept the 490, but I just do, don't think it makes sense when we're that close to a really nice round number. So I could go back over here and change that boundary or that interval width to 500. And that's what we're saying is going to be optimal for that. We should have 10 classes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 classes. We should have the minimum in the first class, so the 1060 is in that first class. Maximum, 5920, should be in that last class. It's uh, close to the top there, so that's going to be the optimal um, histogram, optimal class width.